All right, so we're taking a look at number five on this projectile motion worksheet. Uh, let's go ahead and read it. Sam and Sarah have taken their math books to the top of a 12-story building and look at the pool, which is 160 feet straight below them. So 160 feet straight below them, if I'm looking at this, thinking about motion, that's the initial height, right, because they're starting at 160 feet above. Okay, but I always forget the formula too, so let's go ahead and write that down. So height with respect to time equals negative gravity t squared, which is time, plus the initial velocity times t plus h of zero, which is the initial height. So we just found the initial height, 160 feet. Again, that wasn't typed, straight below them. And Sam just lets go of his book, and Sarah throws her book. So it's interesting that we have Sam just let go of his book, and that means his initial velocity is going to be zero because he's just letting go, meaning he's not having an extra force. However, Sarah throws her book, meaning she's going to have an initial velocity of 48 feet per second because it tells us right there. So Sam's equation is going to look different from Sarah's because Sam doesn't have an initial velocity, but Sarah does. So Sam's equation, H, high respect to time equals negative 16 T squared. Negative 16 is there because that's the constant of gravity on Earth in feet per second. And then Sam, again, doesn't have an initial velocity, so 0 T, and then plus 160 because they're both at the top of the building. Sarah has an initial velocity, so everything will look the same except the initial velocity, which is 48 T plus 160. So we have our two different equations. Let's first work on Sam because we don't have the initial velocity to deal with. So let's take a look at Sam here. So Sam is going to be, because we want to find the height, according to time, when it hits the water. So the height would be zero, meaning the water's at the ground. So we want to find the height at zero. And if it's a true parabolic equation, it should have two different answers. But remember, we're dealing with a real-life situation, cause so can it happen with negative time? Theoretically, yes, but in real life, no, time cannot be negative. So let's keep that in mind. So negative 16 T squared plus 160 because there's no initial velocity. So when looking at this binomial, the way I could solve it is by factoring out the greatest common factor, which is negative 16, leave me with T squared minus 10. All right, so now I said each piece equal to zero, negative 16 equals zero, and T squared minus 10 equals zero, and negative 16 doesn't equal zero, so we can just cross that part out. And let's go ahead and solve what's left. So to get T by itself, we add 10 to both sides, giving me T squared equals 10. And then to get rid of a square, we do the opposite, which is a square root both sides. Now, when I square root the t squared, it becomes t. But when I square root a 10, I need to add the plus and minus because if I add the square root myself, t squared can be, be a positive or negative number, and it's going to be positive or negative square root 10. Now, the square root of 10 isn't a perfect square, so I could pull out a calculator and get a decimal, but we'll leave it exact and leave it just like that. And remember what I said about time, time can't be negative, so the only real choice I have is t equals positive square root 10. All right, so that's how long it takes for Sam's book to hit the water, or when the height is zero. t equals square root of 10, which, again, square root of 9 would be 3, so the square root of 10 would be about 3.1 or 2, something like that. So we'll keep that in mind. All right, now let's deal with Sarah. So Sarah threw her book off the building at 48 feet per second. So we'll go ahead and keep that in there. And again, looking at this equation, we want to find the height at zero, again, when it hits the water. So that's why I set the equation equal to zero. And I have a trinomial this time, but I could still look for the greatest common factor, which, <laughs> what do you know, I could factor out a negative 16 from all three of these. So I'm going to get t squared minus 3t minus 10. And so, and I think we can all agree, if I factor out a number from the front, if I factor out a variable, it would be different. But since I just factored out a negative 16, I can cross that part out. So, negative 10 goes on the top of my x factor chart, and negative 3 goes on the bottom. And what two numbers would satisfy my x factor chart? I believe negative 5 and positive 2 would do that, because negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, and negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Like I said, let's not worry about that 16 in front. All I'm concerned about is the trinomial, which I'm going to make a quadnomial by splitting negative 3t into negative 5t plus 2t. Let's go ahead and group the first two and the last two terms. The GCF of t squared minus 5t is just t, so I have t minus 5. And then I can only factor out a positive 2 from that, so I get a t minus 5. The parentheses match, 
perfect, so we write that down once, and then the leftovers go in the other parenthesis, and that equals zero. And again, like I said, time can't be negative, so t plus 2 equals 0 will give me a negative answer, so we'll cross that out. So my only time is t equals 5. So it takes Sarah's book 5 seconds to hit the water. Now that's curious. Let's go ahead and take a look at both of our answers here. So Sam, his time is the square root of 10, and Sarah's is 5. And like I said, the square root of 10 is going to be about 3.2 seconds, somewhere around there. So interesting, even though Sarah threw the book, Sam's book gets down there faster. Interesting predicament. Hmm, we may have to investigate this more. Why do you think it takes Sam's book shorter than Sarah's book, even though Sam just dropped his book and Sarah threw her book?